I think the amazing thing uh, in India and about Indian art and Indian artists is the fact that you discover hidden gems and treasures uh, at all times. And Chitra Prasad is one of those rare geniuses who's always been known about, who's all, whose work has always been admired, uh, but whose work has really not been seen. The artist has not been discovered by people who respond to art. I think the sheer genius and his contribution to Indian art practice in the 20th century has gone undiscovered. And I think our discovery, and I think over there I have to say this, uh, what the AG has done in terms of restituting the artist, uh, in making sure that he has a platform and his voice uh, and his works uh, are seen and heard, is a seminal contribution that has been made. Chitra Prasad is an artist who is basically uh, self-taught and um, during the 1930s he has been involved in the nationalist movement but later on during the 40s, uh, more precisely 42 and 48, he became an ardent supporter of the communist movement and he was a whole timer of the communist party of India. In many ways when you see his work uh, throughout his career uh, black and white have dominated. Uh, I mean, the body of work that he's best known for are his famine drawings of 1943-42, uh, where the intensity of black and white ink drawings is amazing. The way he controls it, the way he tells the stories, etc., bringing in both an element of depth, uh, an element of chiaroscuro, etc., through that play of black and white. So when he's moving on, he does landscapes, there are color, still lifes, etc. He does some body of uh, works uh, using the figurative, etc. But his protest, his rebellion, his resistance posters are all in black and white. And the Lino cuts that he devises are also a body of work which is very strongly and very staunchly in black and white. Such a man, when he moves on to produce a Ramayana for children, Around the 1960s, we get letters that tell us that he's actively engaged with it. That has always raised a question in my mind, how does this man with a conviction in uh, a left-oriented practice get interested in a kind of a, um, a mythic narrative uh, which we associate differently from his convictions? Chitra Prasad kind of uh journeying towards the creation of uh, the Ramayan, uh, which he started uh, in the late 60s and pretty much, uh, you know, worked over for a few years, uh, a period of three years, etc. Seems like a bit of an anomaly, but when you look at him uh, and his career at this point in time, he's working specifically on children's literature. He's illustrating children's books, fables, uh, you know, the kind of soft stories that show a very strong humanitarian aspect. And when you understand Chitra Prasad working with puppets, working on children's stories, illustrating books, not just in India but overseas as well, uh, in the Czech Republic, you kind of understand that this person is going to undertake a journey towards what is the greatest repository of stories that exists in India. And that repository is the Ramayana.